everyone and welcome back to Fashion Attack. For those who are new, my name is Mikal and on this channel we love to remake any sort of super high interior design for no money. For today's episode, I thought that before the year is over, I would make 10 top IKEA hacks of the year, all on a budget. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The first DIY that I'm going to show you it literally transformed my bedroom from a really dark little room to a huge and super bright space. Nothing does it more than a huge mirror. And if we can do it stylish and industrial like this one, why not? Order lots of lots. Yeah, this mirror is called Lots. It's from Ikea. I'm going to link it down below. First step is obviously to tidy up everything and then we're gonna go ahead and open our lot. They come with little stickers inside so they're squares, uh, rectangulars, and you have to place two of them on each side of the mirror. If you see that your wall is not regular, you can go ahead and add silicone or buy extra double tape because you need this to be secured. After that, all you have to do is level it on your wall. Use one of the sticks as a base so that you're gonna go straight and leave the space that you need to go and add the wood in between after. Do like a karate move to break it in half so that you can use it as you go. Always place a second stick in between the mirrors to place the distance so that you are gonna have the perfect measurements without making so much effort and it's working. Then for the second line, I was like, how am I gonna hold the stick in place? So I added a little piece of double tape on the top so that I could place it and move it ahead with the mirror at every single movement and it worked perfectly. You put the wood, you level it, add the mirror and go ahead, place the vertical lines and then place the horizontal one on top and mark where you're gonna cut it. Now use a jigsaw, use a hand saw, use anything that is more comfortable to you and do this like 30, 40 times according to how many you need to fill up your mirror. Spray all the little woods that you did, you can actually also leave it in wood but I think that it looks more industrial. Place the silicone inside, put your stick on top, press a little bit and go over and over till you arrive to the external size where you're gonna, side where you're gonna have to do the same thing. Then go in with the horizontal lines. We have already cut in them, they fit perfectly inside and you just go and push them inside. Go over and over, it's a very repetitive job but super simple, just put your favorite playlist and go on with it. <clears throat> First, I think we should take some time to look at the before and how bad this wall was before. And now, let's enjoy the transformation! Guys, I am so excited. I was waiting to do this tutorial for so long. My room all of a sudden looked so spacious. The light from outside reflects on the mirror and makes it so bright. And also, it looks taller because the mirror goes all the way to the ceiling and makes the room so much better. Hack number two! For this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to remake this super, super, super desired Urban Outfitters library, bookshop, I do not know how to call it. I'm sure that you have been seeing it also on your feed. It has been everywhere, but the price is totally out of a budget. So I'm gonna show you how to make it using Ikea. We're gonna need only very simple ingredients to make the entire shelf library come to life. One thing is the calyx that you're gonna go and buy from Ikea, the cardboard in which your calyx comes into, so do not break that, and did they actually say ingredients instead of equipment? Cut away the first shelf and then continue assembling your shelf all the way to the top. You're gonna have to add also the side parts before cutting the second segment that we're gonna cut out and then simply trace it and cut it away. Enjoy your shelf, so pretty. Yeah. We are simply going to use some tape to put it in place and be sure that it's going to stay stable on the back for the entire process of our shelving construction. Get your cardboard from one of the borders and start ripping it, ripping it, wrapping it on itself to your at the end. Open it and wrap it from the opposite direction so that it becomes all nice and flexible. At this point, when you stick it on your library, it's going to have the perfect shape. Now, let's make all the rest of the shapes. Guys, you can literally do any shape you prefer according to what you think you're going to put inside. If you have like taller plants that you want to put inside and big bases, then make the squares bigger. If you instead have a lot of tiny accessories that you want to expose, then you can make smaller compartments where to fit them inside and it's going to look insane. The foam. I have already done this mistake once and I'm not going to do it again. Hold your foam upside down while you're spraying it. 
the phone comes out so much more smooth it's so much easier to control it and remember that after that you put it inside it's gonna become bigger once it dries like three hours later get a cutter and cut away all the excess because you see it pops out and make it all nice and smooth Guys, this step will look completely useless to you, but actually it's very important. I sprayed not perfectly, but just to make it a bit more white, the cardboard section, so that if there is any place where we don't cover it completely, it's still gonna appear as part of the texture, and this helps so much. So now, get your hole filler. Does it have a name in English? I don't know. Put your hand inside and then start splashing it all over your shelf. Time for some sanding, and we're basically done with the shelf. If you ever watch one of my videos, you know that I like things that are, have a little bit of an undone look or that they are way more rough. So I did not sand all the shelving till the end. I left the texture way more visible than the original piece. But guys, you obviously can stay there, do it for a longer time and make it as smooth as you like it. The best part of this shelf is literally how much you can customize it to your needs. You can decide the shape of every single segment. You can decide to sand it way, way, way more than I did and have it super smooth. You can decide to sand it less and have it completely rocky effect or to have it in between like I did. I absolutely love the results and I can't wait to see the comments and see what you guys think about it. Tutorial number three and this one is probably going to be the simplest that we're going to do today. It's for any kind of DIY, even if it's the first DIY that you're ever gonna do in your life. Basically, all we need to transform this table is some tiny dowels, you're gonna need a lot of them, a glue gun, and some spray. We're gonna start by cutting these dowels on different heights, so to create a different kind of textures on the leg of the table itself, you can use a hand saw or a jigsaw if you have that. Just start cutting them every time five centimeters shorter and then be sure to sand the edges of it. I'm gonna now go and start placing them starting from the bigger one on the side of the leg and then slowly adding them smaller and smaller so to create some sort of Tri double triangular shape. I do not know the name of this shape, but anyway, you can see it appearing in front of your eyes. It's super simple. You just stick one after the other and you go all around your table. Now that we created this super cool geometric shape on our legs, it's time to make a second shelf for our table and we're gonna do it using the same cardboard in which our table came into so do not throw it away and simply place the top of it on top of the cardboard so you can use it as a shape and cut the perfect sizing of it. I'm gonna use now some a contact paper of the color that you prefer. I use marble. Stick that on, just cut away the edges and start cutting little, little cuts on the sides of your circle so that it's easier to place it around your bottom shelf. You're gonna see later when I attach it. Then we do the exactly the same things also on the top shelving that we already had, the metallic one. We make some little cuts and then we pull it so to wrap it very tight around the shape of our top shelf and it's gonna appear to be perfectly marbled. Guys, the coolest thing about doing DIYs is that you do not have to follow the tutorial as it is. You can totally customize it to what makes you feel more comfortable. Easy Interiors always has such a gold and very fancy vibe to all the objects that she makes and that does not really match my aesthetic. I'm a bit more rough so I thought that the marble look would be cool but to have the entire table in gold was too much and that's why I made it in black and I think it looks awesome. I applied the top and it looks incredible. I'm totally in love with the result and I'm so happy I remade this one. Next video is gonna leave you speechless. We're gonna make the most viral mirror of the year and it's the Ultra Fragola. It goes on the market for like $19,000, which we obviously do not have. And I'm gonna show you how to make it for like a hundred. Guys, this is definitely gonna be the craziest Ikea hack video you have ever seen. This is Nisadal from Ikea. First step is to measure your molding foam and figure out what is the perfect center so that you're gonna place the mirror on top and it has to be centered from the sides, from the top and the bottom. Cut out this little piece that is extra. Yeah, you cannot buy a molding foam that is huge. So just attach three pieces together. Draw the lines that you need to make the curves. It's all a curvy mirror on the side. I had basically 4.25 centimeters left to make three lines that are gonna turn up into three steps. You can see it now on the left side every time I did a curve, 
went inside, touched the line and went back up. You are going to do the same identical thing on the right and on the left side and I'm using here the meter because I want to make sure that all my lines match the right and the left side and that the curves happens at the same height. I basically have the opposite of the truss issues and I always believe that this poor precision knife is going to make all his work but I figured out it would be a lot easier with kitchen knives. Attempt number one was with a bread knife and that's a no. You end up just stabbing the foam. The steak knife is the answer. Now we pass to the boring side where we're going to have to go and cut out the foam in three different um, heights. First of all, you take the external curve and cut completely out the foam till the bottom. Once you did the most external curve, you're going to go and cut the curves inside as a cake. This means you go inside uh, about three centimeters and a half and then cut out the step and the same thing then at the second step you're gonna do three and a half three and a half so like at seven and you cut it again away so at the end you have three curves all at different heights we are gonna take out this scrubbing block it's amazing it doesn't work like the paper it's a block and it makes everything so much rounder and smoother I thought it just changed the entire texture of my foam in a few seconds now that you have everything done you just have to glue the three parts together you can use a Mod Podge, you can use wood glue, any sort of liquid glue basically is going to work. What's left to do is make this little hole on the bottom of your mirror. That's where all your electric cables are going to pass through, so it's important. Time to add the last layer. I just placed it under my structure just to follow the same curves that I had drawn before because I would never have been able to guess them otherwise. So you follow the same draw ing drawing <laughs> and do all the curves towards the inside cut it out and now place it on top of your structure tape it just to keep it in place and now we do the external curves you can already see it the mirrors inside and you can see the frame this works perfectly glue it on the top and we are done layer number two you just need literally a drop of color is going to be enough to cover your entire polyester. The precise quantities are 100 grams of polyester for 2 grams of hardener. Now you go ahead and cover your entire frame. Do, 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 do. And that's how it's going to look a few hours later. For the second layer, I did exactly like before, the same amount of polyester and passed it over, but I realized I would need so much time and effort and material to fill up all the little holes. So I took out the silicone. This trick is amazing to fill up all your holes and then to make it smooth, you just make the trick of the soap. Dip your finger in the soap, pass it on top of the silicone and it's gonna become super duper smooth. You go and insert the lead inside the hole that we previously made, leaving the cables on the back of the mirror and the rest of the light on the front. Then we add a lot of silicone to go and stick our mirror inside and it fits! Yes! Finally, we are ready to stick the LED light. Go and stick it on the most external section that you can so that it will stay hidden inside the structure that we built before. One thing that can totally elevate your space is art and paintings, but they're super expensive. So the best way is obviously to DIY it, and I have to say I'm pretty talented in drawing, but I have no clue about acrylics, oil paints, and all this stuff. So, I decided to take a step out of my comfort zone and finally understand how this works. And that's where the sponsor of this video comes in action. Skillshare is the right destination for all us creative people that want to learn online at our own space, without time pressure, without interruption from ads, and everything in very short little classes that explain everything in detail. I followed Acrylic Painting for Beginnings from Lorian Gonzalez and I have to say the course was amazing. It's divided in short 4 minutes videos that explain everything. And guess what? By the end of her class, I was so confident that I made my own painting. Actually better. I organized a date night where me and my boyfriend painted together. Me, him and our little doggy as invisible people. 
Skillshare is not dedicated only to painting. You can find graphic, photography, editing, time management, basically anything. And for the first 1,000 of you that click on the link down below, there's gonna be one month free trial. I would take advantage of that if I was you. Here comes one of the most useful IKEA hacks I have ever done for myself. I have always been in love with this apothecary cabinet look, but it's extremely, extremely expensive. So, I decided that I could remake it using a lot of IKEA pieces one next to each other and the result was pff, amazing. I'm also gonna cheat showing you how to make drawers out of doors that are not really gonna become drawers. All we need is a hand sew, a squared ruler, a ruler, after that we need some sanding paper and a marker and the last thing is not some paint but a stainer. Mark the places where we want our drawers. Yes, we are gonna make them look like drawers. So what I did is for the top a distance of 12 and for the bigger drawers a distance of 36. So I'm gonna have three lines that result as four drawers. You can go ahead with your hand sew and take your time to make the line as straight as you can and also on the little corners so that you're gonna have the effect also on the borders. It's very important that you do not go too deep. It's only like one or two millimeters. It's just an optic effect. Take out your sanding paper and let's go ahead and do the little details. This is gonna be just a little finishing touch. What you wanna do is pass the sanding paper on top and inside the little lines that we did, so to make it even more smooth. Then we take out our stainer, and instead of using a brush, you have to use a mop. Yes, you just have to dip it inside and go and spread it all around the surface that you wanna cover. Pass way more paint inside the lines that we drew, so that it gives it even a more effect of depth inside the little lines. It's very important that we do not pass the stain identically everywhere. After we do the first layer or two, we want to add extra layers just on a few corners so that it gives it this effect. And I decided to make the legs as one long line, exactly the same length of our dresser. We're gonna cut out a line. This one for me is tall, um, 10 centimeters, and then I added an extra piece of wood on the top. Go ahead and start painting also the legs and the top of your dresser. Super important details are the handles. I bought this one on AliExpress, you're gonna have the links down below and it's gonna make it look even more authentic. What you see here is a template that I made on a paper. I just colored the back of the handles and placed it on the paper so that it would give me the exact space in between the two holes. Then I folded the corners of the paper at the height and length of where I wanted it to appear on the side of the drawers and use the same template. I'm just gonna repeat the same process over and over on all the drawers. Place directly the dresser on top of the legs and then go and hammer inside your nails. Now, all you have to do is put your little paper inside your handle, but no, the trick is to use some coffee to go ahead and stain your paper. It's gonna make it look even more authentic, more vintage, and more old. There it is! Ta -da. The result is so cute, you just add a code on top of the paper, or maybe the name of what you think you have it inside. <laughs> This IKEA hack is so versatile. You do not have to use it on the chair as I did, but it's to change the texture and the color and the print of every single item you have around the apartment. You can use it on a shelf, on a table, on a chair, on a wall maybe. Basically, just make your own art. Today, we are gonna remake this chair in a decoupage. This means we're gonna cover it with paper, you can choose your own print, and also, you can do it directly on the chair, but I'm also gonna spray paint the bottom of it, so I'm gonna build it, but you can skip the step and directly go to the decoupage if that's what you wanna make. What you're gonna need is a brush, a pair of scissors, the Mod Podge, then in case you want to change also the color of the legs, a spray, and super important, a lac, with which we're gonna seal our entire work. Now, 
for the print, you can download them, you can use a napkin or you can strip away images from a magazine. Just unbuild it. About the print, I suggest you to just go ahead and cut out all the little borders and trims of the image that you want to stick on. If you leave it as a square or with this sharp edges, it's not going to look so pretty and so bonded all together on the chair. So just cut out all the edges. After that, we are going to have to decide the print that we want to make on the chair. So before sticking it, just test it on the area where you want to place it. I liked it like this with three images and then you go and cover completely the chair with a mod punch. Place the one first layer you want on the bottom and then again you can cover it even on the second layer on top. When you arrive to the borders, it's a super important step to do a lot of little cuts so that you can fold it easily on the back. Now while the front of the back of the chair is drying, let's go and do the seating area. I also added a little bit of white because I thought that the print was a bit too much and then covered it again with a Mod Podge, went ahead and placed all the print, added a little bit extra white also on the sides and then go ahead and cover completely and add more layers on top. Once and only once it's completely dry, it's gonna take a long time, you can go ahead and do over the back of the the chair. So we do the cut, fold it on itself, wait for it to dry and here you see me doing the other side of the chair. Let's spray it in this super cool bright blue. I thought that the contrast would give it even an extra vibe to the chair and I love the final result. And guys, important tip, go and spray also the screws because we do not want the contrast in black to stand out, we want it to blend all in. Once everything looks as you want it, it's time to protect our little piece of art and go and spray it with some lac to seal everything. This channel basically became famous through me making couches out of scratch, but I have to say that not many couches are as comfortable at a, at, as a solder hum, and that's what I have had, but no. And I'm gonna show you today how to make your own cover of the couch that's gonna change the static completely and make it so much more special because everybody has this couch at home. Basically, we're gonna go from the simple style over here to one over here. First step is obviously the ones of taking the measurements of your couch. We need to take the length and also the depth of this couch and yeah with the fabric we're gonna have to go all around that. Bring a little piece of your pillow with you and go and find the same exact material which obviously you are not gonna find so find the most similar thing. We're gonna go shopping. Ciao! And I ended up buying this linen which is a little bit transparent but that's why I'm gonna use it double. All you need is pins, scissors and your sewing machine. Wait. It doesn't fit. Let's go more far. There it is. That's all your equipment. Now, the linen is a little bit transparent, so I'm gonna use the entire fabric double. The height of the couch is 30, but no, that's not the material that you need. You'd need at least 38, 40, because you need a little bit, little bit of material to go on top of the couch in order for this to hold. There you see me pinning it because I'm using it double and I want to sew all the 40 centimeters on top together not on top. Now let's go and unbuild our couch so that we do not need any sort of weird drawing to make this hack. You're just gonna go and measure it directly on your couch. There you see me pinning around the couch all the material and arriving to the corner. This guys is the fundamental and only detail that has importance in this hack. This little corner that you're gonna have to pin on yourself so that it comes a little curve inside is the reason that this little skirt is gonna hold on your couch. Next step is the one of making some little stripes with the leftovers of the fabric. Let's go on and explain how to put the stripes. No, do not put them too close to the end of the fabric. You wanted to put it five centimeters inside so that it's not gonna rip ever. One on the top and one on the end where is the last line of the wood. Let's take all the pins out beside the ones of the corners that we said is fundamental and now we're gonna go and sew it. I do realize that here you don't see anything and that's why I'm gonna show it to you again over here where I show you that you're gonna have this little triangular and this is what we're gonna put on the inside all for the corners take your pins out and go with your hands make it round and there you go you have another edge now we have to sew the lines I recommend you to do it in several sewings this means do not make just one straight line but just go depth height 
and up again so they are going to have a square that's going to be super resistant because you're going to pull these lines to knot them on the back of your couch and we do not want it to get ripped we want this to last forever there you see how resistant it is all there's left to do is to use a lot a lot of patience to go around the four and a half meters of material that we used for this skirt so you're going to pin it on itself of something like one centimeter inside and then take the needles out every time that you reach it and you go straight for like one centimeter of depth. Let's take a second and look again at the before and how messy my couch actually looked. I'm completely shocked of how a tiny little change could make such a difference. Guys, it just looks so elegant. I am just obsessed and I adore the result. I think it just made my couch completely different. It doesn't even look like the same style at all. It's absolutely modern. It looks like this puffs that now are so trendy. This couches that are made all of one piece. You don't even see the legs anymore. I love it. This Fornacetti piece goes on the market for something like $38,000 because it's literally a piece of art and I thought it was impossible to recreate it but I found a technique that is going to show you how to make art on top of your cabinets without even knowing how to draw I'm going to use my hotel equipment to do this and yes I adore it you can use my discount code down below to buy it assemble everything both the legs on the bottom that are regulatable a bit higher a bit lower and also all the drawers on the front the back differently from the front is not straight and flat so these holes are not gonna make our drawing perfect and that's why I'm gonna take out some little wood nails and I bought the cheapest plywood that I could super skinny to just place it on the back so that it would become, would become all nice and smooth also on the back the same way that we have on the front you have to download illustrator yes there is one week free trial you put down the size that you need that in this case is 119 times 197 and then it's important that you choose the color cmyk because this is means that it's the printing colors colors for the printing not for online basically you drag in the picture that you want to go and use and at this point clicking the third bottom from the left you can finally go and click this that is going to keep the image to the maximum 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 quality this means that instead of becoming pixeled the drawing is going to become like a water-based color so it expands every pixel to a water base so it doesn't come pixeled you can expand the picture as much as you want you already chose the size before you just expand it to all the size of the paper and you're done guys it's important to know that this is not legal if you want to sell it it's unlegal you cannot make this print and sell it you can make it for yourself but if you want to make it for someone else you have to change five things make the eyes a bit bigger the nose a bit to the left whatever you want five differences and then you're ready to go we just came back from the printing store and look at this it's amazing so big huge it's so flat and shiny exactly how we want it i find it a lot easier if you cut out there where the drawers open i guarantee you this is not a maybe this is a must before i learned this technique i used to rip the wallpaper every time while i was placing it while putting water on the bottom i'm going to show you what happens once you go with a flat surface i just use a credit card it's good enough you don't have to buy fancy equipment and start placing it on the surface that you want you will see that when you pass the card the bubbles just pop out you see the water just splashes out so on the corner we do want the paint so i'm gonna apply only one little exactly at the corner and i'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom We are now super sure that this line is straight and that the distance that we're gonna put in between is always the same. So I'm gonna rip off this little piece, apply it again on the inside so that now that I place the second one, it's gonna be the same distance. You're gonna go and repeat the same process a bazillion times. I like to start from the right and the left and reach the center. Same technique, but this time we're gonna go horizontally. We place the little pieces of tape and then we place the long one on top and we do this for all the top part. Now this is gonna take a while and I know you have nothing better to do than watch a four hour video of me painting, but I do not have enough battery in my camera for that. So we're gonna use magic. The satisfaction of seeing that face appear under the tape while ripping it off, it's infinite
Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm gonna show you now a super, super, super simple tutorial of how to make the pond mirror that has been on my wish list for so long. I just need to get a glass cutter and the trick is basically done. I got my glass cutters a while ago when I was doing these tables over here, but you can order them online. They're extremely cheap and they come in two different ways. This one that is literally like a pen and you can go free-handed on your cutting. And this one that instead works like when you were at school, making all circles, just placing this on the glass or on the mirror and then making the shape. I'm putting you here the measurements on the top left and you can totally take out your ruler and follow them and make it exactly as original. I thought it wouldn't be such a difference even if it just went free-handed it would look pretty. Normally there is no sticker on the back of your mirror but if you're following the same tutorial with the same IKEA mirror you're gonna have to take your sticker off. Now take out your patience because we're gonna repeat the same movement a lot of times. We make one arch only, put it outside from the table, press it from the bottom so the gravity oops, oops. continue with the same technique you're gonna do this also on little arches because it becomes smaller and smaller their ears that you want to break off and every time it becomes harder because when there's less weight on the part that you're breaking it's harder to take it off and sometimes it's internal curves that means an arch pointing towards the inside and on those ones you have to be very careful not to break the entire mirror off. Sometimes when you have to cut out something that is very tiny, there's not enough gravity to pressure down the right spot so you're gonna have to go and do it with this. I'll show you. We are not doing this in random spots. We are following the lines that we have already drawn with the glass cutter, but there where the edges were too tiny to break off the glass with gravity, we're gonna have to break it by hand. And now we just simply go and sand every corner. Are you ready? No cut. No cut. Clean up your mirror and the blue marks of your marker. transformation of this entire video and this piece was so cool we found it on Pinterest while I was remaking the apartment of one of my customers I am an interior designer in my real life and I knew the second that I saw it that I had to remake it so watch me remaking this piece with the help of her son I'm not even sure that this should be called IKEA hack maybe it's an everything hack all you need is a TV shelf a closet it's gonna work in the same way if you're buying it for the purpose of the tutorial just don't build it if you have it already and you want to transform it just unscrew everything else. What we're doing now is gonna be sanding the entire surface of our drawers so that after that we can paint it and glue all the textures on top of it. Three, due, uno, finish! What you want to take off is the protection layer that is on top of every IKEA piece of furniture and then you just clean away the dust that you created. So to be sure to paint it right. You have to measure your uh, drawers and then you have to calculate how many lines you want to put on top of them. I decided to put eight. You divide it for the width of your shelf and there you go. You have the amount of space that you need to leave between one piece of wood and the other one. I'll tell you already now that I did a mistake. I used transparent silicone but I would absolutely recommend using a white one. Yes, you see it more if you do a mess but the white silicone absorbs the paint way better. So do that. Yep, do you see? Having the pieces of wood that are shorter than the height of your TV shelf creates this texture, adding one on the top and one on the bottom that is absolutely fantastic. So do not buy them of the same height of your TV shelf, get them shorter and alternate one on the top and one on the bottom. We are gonna go and pass some primer. No matter what color you wanna pass on top of your drawers, it's very important to pass primer, especially because the two surfaces are not the same and we want this to come smooth as possible. As you can see, I'm using two different kind of brushes, and there is a reason. The brush is helping me to go inside the little corners in between the smoothness of the drawer and the volume of the piece of wood, while instead the roller helps me put it all flat and nice on the wood so that we do not have any um, brush marks and bubbles. We want it as smooth as possible. I'm gonna do the same thing with the primer and also with the color. And yes, I had to do this three times because my closet was black and before I could cover it completely. I had to give a lot of layers. Mm -hmm. 
So guys, I hope you had fun and enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet. And before we close this video, let's not forget to give a shout out to my Patreon subscribers because yes, thank you Kismet and thank you to my mom. And like always, see you next Monday with a new makeover.